I'm Dr. Eric Stark. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in San Diego, California. I specialize in sports medicine, and this is a day in my life. So this is my typical Wednesday. I like to get my workouts done in the morning so that I have time in the evening with my family. I did a workout with, from six to seven with my wife. Now I'm headed to jujitsu for an hour roll, and then I'll head to the office and see patients today. We finished jiu-jitsu for the day, got a good roll in, some good competition in the class. Now we're headed to the office to start the real work day, see some athletes, about 30 to 40 patients with uh, shoulder and knee issues, because that's what I specialize in. Orthopedic sports medicine is a subspecialty of orthopedic surgery. We deal with mainly athletic patients, but also a lot of weekend warriors that tend to get injured doing their sport. From a technical perspective, I really enjoy it. I get to do arthroscopic surgery which is working on TV screens a lot like video games. Games I played growing up. I had Atari all the way to PlayStation. From a patient perspective, I find it really rewarding because these patients, they want to get back to their level of competition. They are motivated and they tend to have good outcomes. So we're getting to clinic now. We're gonna see about 50-50 shoulders and knees. It's a clinic day, not a surgical day, so we're gonna do some injections, both platelets, cortisone, gel. We'll uh, see some pre-op patients, some post-op patients, review some MRIs and see what we find. Should be a fun day. We have some interesting patients. We have some good pathology from some MRIs we're reviewing today. We have, it looks like a possible ACL tear. We'll review that MRI, a rotator cuff tear, and then a young athlete with um, just a small medial meniscus tear that might need to do well with an injection. So we can start by looking at some of those images and go from there. So this is the young crossfitter with uh, ACL tear. This is just brief anatomy, the femur, the, the tibia, the, and the kneecap right here. And then this person had an ACL tear in the past that was fixed and now it needs to be fixed again. So this ACL here is torn and we're gonna probably go to surgery and put a new ACL in. Here you're seeing a meniscus tear as well. That person has this white streak here and we'll probably repair that as well because fixing the meniscus is important in a young athlete to help prevent arthritis. So here we have an MRI of a shoulder, the left shoulder. You can see the humerus. This is the head of the humerus, uh, which is your shoulder bone and the glenoid, the socket. And here we're looking at a rotator cuff tear. So this part, you can see the rotator cuff muscle and tendon. It looks almost normal, a little tear here, but it attaches. And as I scroll through, you'll see this part is now all the way torn off, just a little thread left here, and then completely off here is the stump. So we're gonna have to fix this in surgery. We'll do it arthroscopically, minimally invasive. 
It should be a challenge though because of how much it's back and uh, but I think it's going to come out good. All right, so here we have an MRI of a knee and uh, we're looking here for a meniscus tear. This is a young patient, 26, he's really active, plays basketball and he had a twisting injury and hurt his knee so it wasn't getting better with uh, therapy and uh, we got an MRI. So his problem is this small meniscus tear and it's a little streak in the meniscus here and it just keeps bothering him. So we're going to keep it simple today. You can see it here as well, this little streak. And uh, since nothing else seems to work at this point, we'll try a little cortisone injection and see if we can uh, alleviate the inflammation and get him back out there. A little more therapy should be good. We're doing a knee injection here. This patient has a meniscus tear right here on the inside part of the knee that's causing pain. We saw that on the MRI. He wants to be active still and he's kind of tried everything else. So we're going to give this a try with a little cortisone injection. We're going to use the ultrasound machine to make sure we have an accurate injection, make sure we're in the joint, not in soft tissue. Flex this muscle. That's a, uh, that shows it really well. And you actually have a little bit of fluid. So you can see some of the inflammation here. That black, dark black area in there is a little bit of a fluid layer that's not always there. So from this little tear is leading to some inflammation that's causing some of the pain that we're going to want to reduce with this injection. There's that space. All right, you're going to feel a little pinch, okay? Three, two, one, pinch. And then guide up the needle. You can see the needle now on the ultrasound, the white streak coming in right there. You doing okay? Yep. Doing All right. right, we're going to inject some ozone here, a little, little bit of numbing medication. Take it easy, we're gonna do a little more physical therapy because sometimes with the, after the injection, some therapy helps. Now let's do three weeks, check on you and see how you're doing. All right, sounds good, thank you so much. All right. So we finished up a good busy day of clinic and uh, but the day's not done. We're gonna head over to a lab and um, you know, part of what we do is we work with industry to come up with new surgical techniques which uh, help further the science of orthopedics and medicine in general. So it should be uh, interesting and we'll uh, see how it goes. So we're here at Impact Orthopedics. They're a local medical device company. They set up this amazing education center where we can meet. We have meetings here, we discuss cases, have presentations. They also have a lab where we can work on techniques, push the envelope because it's a lab with uh, arthroscopic surgery and uh, just new techniques to help with patient care. So today in the lab, I wanna work on a technique to help preserve uh, shoulder function in patients that have basically rotator cuff tears that can't be repaired. Traditionally, these have to be replaced. And you have a younger patient with a massive tear that can't be fixed normally. There's ways now to put patches in to help uh, increase function and delay uh, any uh, replacement surgery. So we should have fun with that today and see how it goes. So this technique, it's called a tuberoplasty to be specific, is a technique uh, we're working on to have a, uh, to place a patch. Now that, that's been done before, placing patches over the, the bone here. But we're trying to do it with some newer anchors to kind of save time and see if we can get the procedure down to under 20 minutes to do it. And so we're working with different anchors that have, some of them have just come out, kind of create a shuttling system to get the graft to shuttle into position faster than it's been done previously. So that's what we're working on. I actually plan on going down to the company's headquarters in Naples, Florida in December to work on that with them. And it's been, a, it's been awesome to be invited to be part of that project. So that was the lab. I do that about once every three or four weeks. I beta test some of the new equipment and some of the devices and it's important that they get my feedback. Now we're gonna head home, cook dinner for the family. It was a good long day, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So there you have it, that's a day in the life. On a typical Wednesday, started out with a good workout, got jujitsu in, got to the office, saw a lot of patients, and even got some lab time in. Now I just got home, have a little unwind time, maybe a few minutes, and then I'm gonna start cooking dinner for uh, the family. And actually though, that's actually a relaxing part of my day. So I'm originally from New York. I grew up on Long Island. I did uh, medical school in New York and Syracuse. I did my residency at Boston University. And now I'm out in San Diego and I love it. Um, I don't have to worry about my hair freezing. 
and on the way to work in the morning. I married my, my wife. She's from uh, Northern California. I'm definitely a California person now, but you know, I still have that East Coast sarcasm. And that's something I learned when I went from East Coast to West Coast. It's not that it's harder on one side or the other. I think that's a, you know, maybe a myth, but there's definitely a bit of it more gruff on the East. Sarcasm, a little bit more uh, intensity, maybe a little bit more type A. Out on the West Coast, I think people are a little more laid back. And if I lived in 70 degree weather my whole life, I can understand that. I love being an orthopedic surgeon. I love working in sports medicine, but to not acknowledge the grind it takes to get there would be uh, misleading. There's a lot of hard work to get the grades for college, to get into med school, from med school to get into residency, and then even fellowships after that. It's, it's a 14 year road when you kind of put it all together. And it's a lot of hours and a lot of work, and uh, there's no other way to, around it. However, I do believe that, you know, anything you really want to succeed at, you're going to have to put that time in, that effort in, whether it's orthopedic surgery or any other job or business. But in this case, I do really believe it's worth it. Well, I feel like residency is the ultimate bonding experience. You're a group of, in my case, five, and you're in the thick of it for five years. And uh, you kind of do everything together and you go through the struggles and the long hours and getting yelled at by people that know more than you, learning and trying to get better. And it's a long, hard experience. My best friends are from that group of people because you went through it with them. And that's probably my best memory of my training is the, the friends, the bonds, and um, those experiences. Being 15 years into practice, is it, is it all that I expected and hoped to be? I think in a lot of ways it's more. Everyone tells you, oh, you're going into surgery, you're going to have no family life, you're going to be a slave to your job, just a grind all the time. And I admit, when I first started out, you know, getting started, it was definitely more like that, especially the training part, but even in the first few years of being an attending. But now I, I feel like I have a great life. I have a family, I get to work out, I get to have a time with my family, cook dinner, we go on vacations. I take my kids on a Disney cruise. It's, it's, these are things that having my profession has allowed me to do, but it also, I have the time to do it. I don't feel like I work too much. I feel like I'm around and I have time and I watch a Netflix series just like everybody else and will binge watch on a certain Sunday sometimes. So. In a lot of ways, it's not what I expected, it's better. So some advice I have for uh, aspiring doctors and physicians that are in college and pre-med is make sure you get some experience in whether it's shadowing a doctor, or working in a hospital. It's really important to get good grades and you know, it's a constant grind to make sure you have the grades to get into med school and sometimes you can, you can get lost in what you perceive being a doctor is and just trying to get the grades. But I think it's important to also get some practical experience to make sure it's what you love because it's a lot of work, it's a long road and you want to know that that's what you want to do. Well, that's a day in my life. I'm Dr. Eric Stark. You can find me at ericstarkmd.com. And if you're a pre-med or a med student and you want to become an orthopedic surgeon, go check out my friend Dr. Kevin Duval at medschoolinsiders.com.